The Film Verdict gives you Noir 360, hosted by Rashid Bahati, a global podcast that explores the impact and influence of black cinema around the world. Okay. All right. We're back with you uh, with Rafiki Kai, who's my co-host now. He's going to serve as a co-host because, uh, Rafiki, I understand you know our next guest pretty well. I do. I do know Floyd. Um, Somehow, every time I come home to Chicago, because I'm born and raised on the south side of Chicago, we always um, find time and energy to voice connect. But we have not yet broke that bread. But it's going to happen, and I believe it's going to happen next time I come home, Floyd, in May. So... (laughs) <laughs> well, he definitely is in demand. There's no doubt about it. He he's at he's right like the brother that sat what they call a spook sat by the door, man. He's like he's on time. You know, he's on time with where everything is right now. But listen, uh Floyd uh Webb, I welcome you to uh New R three sixty, which is uh a podcast that deals with culture, music, uh, you know, art film. Primarily today, I wanted to talk to you a bit about black film. And I know you've been engaged. You're there based in Chicago. And it, we're just so happy you could take a, a moment to talk to us. Okay. Okay. Well, listen, uh, why don't we just start with uh, what is Floyd Webb? Who is Floyd Webb? What, what, are, you, what are you doing in the space of uh, black film? What do you what did you do? Well, let's see. Uh, I, work as a, I work as a producer and as a curator. Uh, I, uh, when I first got started as a filmmaker, you know, my, uh, my first activity in terms of film was a screenplay I had when I got out of high school. And uh, I had just a real crazy friend. He kind of a con man guy. Went to LA, got somebody there, told them I had a screenplay, and they flew me out there looking at the screenplay I had. But they thought it, but they thought I wrote a screenplay about Fred Hampton. Because this was like, you know, like like a year after Fred Hampton died. And uh, and that experience that I had there, it's like I didn't like they wanted to film about the death of Fred Hampton and but what I had done is something about how this brother lives, you know, because we were engaged in trouble before the Black Panther Party. We had all been in the youth group at that way to Plus, it was a little bit simple. It was, you know, there was an atmosphere from 1967 to 69 where Fred, when Fred got murdered. Man, we had done so much, you know, and trying to encapsulate that with all the different organizations you know, dealing in the Rainbow Coalition, that stuff was all more important. You know, I mean, that's what led up to his murder, you know. And and what I learned is uh, I met a guy named Hugh Robertson one night. And he had just finished, he was, uh, he was an editor on uh, Midnight Cowboy. And he had been nominated for Academy Award. And I ran into him and we got some talking. And I asked him what his next, what he was going to do next with this Academy Award thing. He said he's going to make this film called Melinda. And he was going to take the money from that and go back to Trinidad and start a film school. I said, you ain't going to stay in Hollywood? He said, no. Hollywood ain't for you. I said, Hollywood is where you, Hollywood is where you come pick up a check. You don't come looking for more. You come pick one up, right? And then with the other people that I met out there, they were telling me there's no market for black film. You know, this is the, this is all old. You know, the black exploitation thing was 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 ending. Hollywood had made their money, and, and they were saying that this was the end. That was it. So, Floyd, what 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 year what year are you talking about here? I'm talking about the nineteen uh, the fall of nineteen seventy. Well, it, that's so profound. Um, the end of the black exploitation era of uh coffee and uh, you know uh across 110th street those kind of films huh 
Yeah, yeah. They were, I mean, they were still coming out, but basically you had executives out there and some black folks which were saying the same thing. This ain't never coming back. And I'm like, well, do you want it to come back? <laughs> That's a good question. You know, I mean, I mean, that was, that was the whole thing. It's like we were, you know, I was at that time, I was also, I was also like, uh, co-director of the Office of the National Committee to Combat Fascism in Maywood, which had grown out of the anti-fascist uh, conference that was held by the Panthers in 1969, right? And out of that came this development of, like, these offices, the National Committee to Combat Fascism office. After Fred Hampton was murdered and they were dissembling the Black Panther Party, they came after uh, they came after, um, after the National Committee to Combat Fascism offices. When, the first film I ever programmed, well, actually, I didn't want to program that film, but we needed to raise, uh, we were on the corner in Maywood. We were renting from a guy, this Mexican guy who was in the Rainbow Coalition, Chuck Crop. He took on that whole block. And on the corner was a movie theater. It's called the Lido Theater. So Chuck wanted his rent. He said, hey, I tell you what, you, you guys get a film. You, you guys run the film. I'll give you the box office, and I'll take the, the uh, confessions. So we got into it over what film to show. I wanted to show Burn, the Kemata, this, form, this film by Guido Fonte uh the same guy that made uh, the Battle of Algiers. And Burn was about this, rev- this revolution on a Caribbean island, and it starred Mar- Marlon Brando. And it's a dynamite film, right? And, um, but my, but my revolutionary brothers wanted to show Shaft. <laughs> well, you know why? <laughs> Shaft was very popular, like, well, yeah, super fly. Shaft, Come on now. Yeah, but Shaft, yeah, but Shaft had played already. Shaft had already played. Shaft had played out, right? But people wanted to see it again. There wasn't no Netflix. Well, they, well, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, they didn't show up. <laughs> oh, wow. Up. So y'all we did up, choose. Wow. We, wow. We, ended up, we ended up losing money. We, we would have done better with Kemata, but with Fern, because when they found out how, how radical Burn was, they took it out the theaters. Wow. So you know, is that theater still standing in? in oh Maywood? no, Maywood is all changed. No, Maywood is all changed. That's, that whole that whole block was was, was torn down. You know, but wow. but yeah. So like that's where I. So that kind of like where I get start. I got started in 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 programming, but I didn't. You know, like I didn't keep programming until I got to. Uh, when I was in England, they asked me to do something. When I moved, I left the country, and because uh, I was a photojournalist. Um, uh, I went to, I went to the junior high and I became a member of the ASMP and I left the country because I was on, on the way to, on the way to Tanzania. And I engaged with a lot of different people and all the people that I engaged with when I was in England in like 1974 to 75, all of my close friends became filmmakers, men like Shabazz, Ibru Caesar, you know, and, uh, they were kind of like at the ground level of the um, the uh, black workshop movement. So I was in, in, involved with all those guys, you know. Uh, and we, you know, we we did a few few, few things programming films, but uh, so that but, that that prompts me to ask you a question, right? So uh, in in seventy four seventy five. You were like finding camaraderie and, 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 and creative brotherhood with folks in England. Is, is there a bridge today that facilitates and promotes that kind of like camaraderie of creative storytellers across what we call the pond? Are, are you familiar with? There's no, there's no, I mean, Menlik Shabazz was that. Uh, BFM Magazine, BFM Film Festival. That's what BFM Film Festival was. BFM yeah, I'm very Film familiar. Menelik, right? Yeah, Menelik Tibet. Yeah, yeah. Menelik. So I, I work. Yeah, yeah, I know Menelik. Yeah, so I worked with Menelik from nineteen what from nineteen seventy four until he died. No, so um, so so, so he was the one, right? So I'll be going back over. Uh, 
I'll be going going back over soon. Probably I I got to go go to Japan in May, and I was I was gonna make my way back around the other way and make some stops. So, uh, so we will be trying. We will be doing that again. Right now, I'm on the board of directors of Chicago Filmmakers, and um, uh, and and on Cartoon Print Films. And I got on the board. I didn't want to be on the board, but I was convinced to be on the board because there might be some possibilities that some of this that we can help facilitate some of exactly what we're we're talking about. Uh, Floyd, uh, do you see because of your <laughs> you obviously I love that you know, background of Fred Hampton and how you kind of got into the mix uh, and how you look at things. And do you see right now this, how film, particularly black film, film done by black people can kind of make these connections, kind of like what you're just talking about with BFFM and Menelik, uh to, to bring about this common cause right now with black people being this struggle here in people don't even talk about it that way here in the United States with black men and black women being killed and other people of color being killed in the streets by policemen. Uh, there's no connection as far as I can see where we made that connection of common cause, you know, with other filmmakers around the world. What are your thoughts about that? Oh, uh, well, my African American brothers, um, some of us have a tendency when we go abroad to, uh, you know, to represent, <laughs> we, we try to represent American exceptionalism. Mm. And we think that we define the rest of the black world. That's interesting. And we don't. No, and we, we don't. don't. You know? And, uh, you know, I sit in on a meeting one time with Menlik. No, this is a, another guy. Uh, uh, and um, we were uh, we were doing a, a, a thing on music, and they brought someone from New York, uh, Nelson George, right? And Nelson um, basically said that, you know, he didn't recognize any other hip-hop because, you know, because African American was hip-hop. You know, and that anything else was was a um, uh, anything else was an imitation. That's a kind of ignorant uh, perspective. I know who Nelson George yeah, is. I'm, I'm a little surprised of him that. making a statement <laughs> like that. Oh, did I mention a name? Did I mention a name? You did I'm mention sorry. a name. <laughs> you, sorry, you, I, you I didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to do that. But 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 on your point, though, man, that is the level of certain kind of arrogance Hubris. that has, whatever you want to call it, that is perpetuated about African-Americans thinking that we got the answers. And obviously wow. we don't. Wow. And yeah, obviously yeah. we don't respect the reality of diaspora. Because exactly. you can yeah. just say one word, diaspora, yeah. and that squashes all exactly. of that. All of and, that. And, totally and, agree. And, <laughs> and, I, and I see a lot of that stuff is... Really, part of that that ongoing that ongoing court jail pro. Mm. You know, see, you know, I see that part of you know, <laughs> brother <laughs> Floyd. No. I knew we supposed to be talking to you, brother, because see, you're bringing yeah. another level of consciousness to the table, man, that people don't mm -hmm. talk about. Mm -hmm. See, the uh, the conference of black lawyers that was based in Chicago dealing with that's why I brought up the concept of common common cause. I wanted to get your your opinion about the film. But see, think about it for a second. They at the time that you were coming into the film industry, man, uh, in the in the early 70s, late 60s and everything that was going on, there was a move with the conference of black lawyers you know, to petition the U.N. about injustices that was happening to black people here in the United States that nobody was really dealing with. Which, it seems which, like we're in that same position. Yeah, which, which Malcolm brought up. You know, you know I'm, working exactly. with a guy, I'm working with a guy in Budapest right now who's doing a film on the assassination of Malcolm X. Mm. But, the angle, but the angle that he has, he's looking at Malcolm's, uh, uh, he's looking, looking at Malcolm's trips abroad that started in 1958. 
You right. know, Malcolm had been going back and forth to Africa from 1958. Right. On behalf of the nation. Right. But what he managed to do in those trips is he was making contact with the revolutionaries in Algeria. He was in touch with leaders of the Mau Mau. He was in Kenya. He became a thorn in the side of, 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 of not only American, and, 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 uh, American imperialism, but, uh, but, uh, but, um, but Euro- European colonialists, right? He was, you know, he was like, I mean, we don't, we're learning. This film is going to teach us everything that we don't know about what Malcolm did in Africa in terms of his contact in Africa. Love right? it. I love it. So and it's the same thing. It's the same thing that got, that got Martin Luther King killed. When they started dealing in foreign policy, that's when they had to go. True that. True that. So I, I'm just curious, it's, and I, I'll own it as a, as a shallow curiosity, but I'm compelled to ask nonetheless. Mm-hmm. This filmmaker in Budapest, are they of African descent? No, or? no, wow. no, 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 he's from, no, he's, he's from third, third world newsreel. He's one of the founders of third world newsreel. Yeah. Familiar with third world sure. newsreel. Yeah. 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 Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Alan, uh, uh based yeah. in, uh, is that the one in San Francisco? Based in New York. Oh, based in New York. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. New York. And with, yeah, that was California yeah. newsreel that's out here right. on the West Coast. Right. But yeah, based in New York. Right. Yeah, man. That's yeah, so interesting. Yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, I mean, that's what they always, did. you know, that, that's the same thing that they did. I mean, newsreel was, uh, newsreel in New York had to make a feeling, you know, before anybody. You know, um, I mean, they was, you know, they've, they've, they've always been radical, you know, and they've kind of stuck, stuck to that. And, and Chris, Chris Choi was, uh, it was Chris Troy and Alan, Alan Siegel. They were, they were, uh, they were a, a married couple and, and they were two of the founders of Newsreel, you know? So, um, so working with him and looking at the types of films that, that people are trying to make, um, it's very hard to get these films made. Right? Yeah, man. Tell me about very, it. Yeah. Tell yeah, me about it's it. Very, it's very hard to get films made that, that operate outside of the, of, of all of the tropes and stereotypes. Even when people say that they're progressives. <laughs> yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah. Because, 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 I mean, really, it's, it's like, uh, you know, people get on me because I didn't, people got on me because I didn't, I didn't like, uh, Black Panther. Um, and, um, I was like, what, but, it's okay for me not to. I don't. I'm are not talking about not to the, like it. Are you talking about the Disney Black Panther? The Dis, not the Marvel Black Panther. There's a Disney Black Panther. There, there's a distinction. We have to be very clear about that. No, I but, I, I got you. Uh, I but, never, but I like never really, personally saw the because <laughs> I was against so many aspects of what was going on. That never. Oh, even, both films. Both films. Yeah. Both so films. I, I feel you on that. I feel you but, on that. Yeah, but but uh, but it's interesting because. Um, you know, those two, two guys who, who did, uh, get, so, the, so the two guys that did, so first there was the Black Panther film, right? Now, when I was coming up, our reading on the Black Panther, when I was a kid, the Black Panther comic came out, uh, at the same time that Ramparts magazine was writing about Huey Newton and Bobby Seale in Oakland about the founder of the Black Panther party there. And there was all these arguments all the time about, yeah, have you, have you read the Black Panthers and the Black Panther organization? No, it's a comic book. No, it's not it's an organization. Those are the steps and stuff that, that we were, as 14 year olds, that's what we were going through because there had been another lone discounting Black Panther organization during the civil rights movement. You know, that was protecting civil rights workers when they came down there. That Black Panther symbol, we already knew because we were all with Fred in the, in the youth group of, of, of the uh, NAACP, you know, of which we made a mass exodus from. When King was was murdered, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, I mean so we, we were tied up in all that. But when that magazine came, when when the comic book came out, we saw that as a as a as a as a reinvention of the story of Patricia Lumumba and the mineral rich province of Katanga. Mm-hmm. We went so far as to do as to look at look at the letters in Katanga and Wakanda and see how the word. How the word Wakanda came out of out of out of uh, Kansas. You know, we were we were some crazy fourteen year olds, but that's when, but those are the kind of brothers that I that I was I was I was hanging out with back back then. You know, right? And 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 so we saw that as a retelling, and it's interesting because in the you know in the uh, Marvel Black Panther, white white folks don't get to go to Wakanda ever. It just don't happen. 
the movie comes along, the Disney movie comes along, not only do they get to go there, but the CIA, who had a huge part in the murder of, uh, in, in the murder of uh, Patrice Lamont, but they have a vital role in the film. Well, that was the huge contradiction that a lot of people did not pick up on. Uh, yeah. And that's the critical aspect of, well, you know what I'm saying, watching film. Well, you have to remember, too, we were in the, we were in the middle of the reign of this proto-fascist Trump, right? Where, you know, the rise of fascism was, it was you know, where fascism was on the rise faster than it's ever been, you know? And the Black, the, 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 the uh, Black Panther film was actually probably one of the best things that happened to black folks since the election of Obama. Absolutely. I mean, I, I mean serious. When you, when you look at the reaction, man, yeah. it's like it was a real thing. You know, it's like people started talking about Afrofuturism who had never right. even considered Afrofuturism, didn't know nothing about right. science fiction, but they hooked on to this, which is a good thing in, in a way. Right. You know what I mean? Right. There's a good side and a bad side to all of this stuff, you know? We couldn't use it as an organizing principle because it be, be, because now, like, we went from having like a thousand events, a thousand Afro futures and events around the world every year for about two or three years until after the Black Panther. Everybody's waiting for the next movie. And stuff just slowed down. You know, it kind of like slowed down, right? Because now Black Panther film defines Afro futures. You know, good point. Good point. And, and now, and now, so, and so now, like last year, you had a uh, New York, uh, uh, a big New York organization had a, had a, uh, Afrofuturism, uh, Afrofuturism, uh, a two month long Afrofuturism festival. And now, uh, the, uh, Smithsonian African American Museum is about to have a, uh, uh, they're, they're doing a big Afrofuturism exhibit, you know, and, um, and, the thing that we say, because, you know, in Chicago, we came up under sun, sun, sun rocks and we took some rocks. A lot of us took some rocks seriously, you know, and like what they, what people call Afrofuturism, we had called speculative fiction. We call black science fiction, but that term Afrofuturism grows out of something called culture jam, right? And when that white boy named it, uh, named it Afrofuturism, he saw it as a tendency. He wasn't inventing the term. What happened was the younger black people came along, saw this term, and they popularized it, right? Uh-huh. But it, but, but culture jamming is a subversive anti-capitalist endeavor, right? So, so it does, you know. So, Floyd, so, let, so me, what, let me jump in. Let me I'm jump sorry. in. No, 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 no. We know you're going too far afield. No, 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 no. No, you're not. You're not no, going you're not. too far there, afield at no, all. There's no too far afield, man. This is wisdom you agree <laughs> on. And when the griot speaks, it's it's not a field. You just in many fields, but not a uh-huh. field. So when you speak about Black Panther um defining Afro futurism in the minds of many people, right? Mm-hmm. What immediately came to my mind is the responsibility of culture, right? The responsibility of um, giving information and awareness, right? So uh-huh. If a lot of young people or a lot of the community were familiar with Octavia Butler, right, they would have mm-hmm. had a contrast to hold up against um, Black Panther or they would have had some other kind of way of um, having been familiarized with, you know. Or let me ask you this way. When you, when you think of Octavia Butler, where do you put her in this conversation on the spectrum from Sun Ra to Culture Jamming to Black Panther Disney. Well, well, she really, she, 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 she really took. Well, no, that's a hard one because Octavia Butler to me operates as an outsider. She's a nerd from the Black community, right? Mm-hmm. Nerd culture in the Black community was was to really recognize, and she was a major nerd, right? She was somebody who didn't fit in, you know. She was somebody who had to define her own world mm-hmm. based on what she looked like, where she lived, all her interests. Hey, hey can, can, can you guys hold on just a minute? Sure. While just, you're taking a, yeah, just take a break for a second. Yeah. Um, I just want to remind our 
audience, you're listening to Noir 360, and I'm your host, Rashid Bahati, and we're also joined today. I have the pleasure of having a co-host today, which I'm excited about, <laughs> Rafiki Kai. So thanks, okay. Rafiki, for being here. And, uh, okay. All right, so I'm are back. You, okay, you're back, and we're mm-hmm. talking to um, a uh, extraordinary person whose name is Floyd Webb, and he's based in Chicago, extraordinary filmmaker, um, a cultural engineer, if I historian, can put it that way, historian, <laughs> all wrapped in one. And this is so exciting. I just wanted to make the point as you talked about Sunrise, uh, it, you know, a brother from Alabama. Mm-hmm. Yeah, brother from, from, wait, wait, from Birmingham, the well, Magic City. Yeah. The, the, from yeah. the Magic City. From the Magic City, the same place I'm from. So I'm like really excited wow. about the fact that I run into these interesting people from the state of Alabama, which is a native name, you know, mm-hmm. Alabama, Tuskegee, mm-hmm. you know, all these names are native names. You yeah. Know? yeah. So, so it's interesting that we're linked into almost like going to West Africa with the Dogon, right? You're linked into this <laughs> cosmic connection that you're bringing well, out, Floyd. Yeah, well, you have to remember, too, when we talk about the South, talk about Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, you know, we're talking about we were, you know, we were all being written like I'm from the Delta, Mississippi. We're being raised on the land of the ancient Aztecs, right? Um, there is... You know, the Aztec, the Aztec nation stretched all the way from South America up into the United States, you know, and they found all these artifacts. And um, and that's something I was aware of growing up in Mississippi, you know, and, and it's something Sun Ra would talk about. You know, um, I mean, when I was a kid, well, when I was about six, seven years old, Sun, Sun Ra used to, they had a speaker's corner out in Washington Park on, on the way to the museum, on the way to the Museum of Science and Industry. My uncle... I would rather my cousin would always want to walk through the park so we could see the speaker's corner. These guys are talking about pyramids. They talk about satellites and out of space and the stars and the constellations, you know. And, and it was fascinating to me because we had a lot of science fiction on TV then. So I was totally into it. And, and we called Sonny Sonny Ray. I didn't even know who he was when, when I was like six, seven years old. We just called him Sonny Ray, you know. And not know, and I would learn later that that Sun Ra was that Sunny Ray that I knew. And he used to hang out with a bunch of gangbangers. I mean, these guys were some straight up thugs, man. But I love but it. they were, <laughs> but they were, but they were visionary thugs. They had their own organization, mm-hmm. you know. They were putting this up. I mean, they was involved in some, you know, in some, in, in some shady stuff. But they were taking the proceeds of that shady stuff. You know, going to this into this Afro future, you know, they were they were black futurists in the nineteen fifties, you know? And that that's what and that's what, what rock came out of, man. Right. And um and, and like that's what informed I mean, that really informs a lot of what I did and became because at the same time, you know, Chicago was uh uh Chicago was a center of like nuclear missile bases. You know, my old man was a radar guy. And he, he, he worked on 31st and Lakeshore Drive in, uh, in, uh, Burnham, uh, Burnham Park. They, they had a uh, underground missile facility. And, and like, you know, so that stuff. So we were totally informed. Plus we had people that were followers of J.A. Rogers. Wow. You know, we, had a guy named, we had a guy named, named Hammurabi Rob, who was like our like resident African historian, right? Who, who did all these events from the 1930s, you know, so. Uh, so, and, uh, plus, plus Chicago was a, Chicago is like probably the center of the origins of, of Pan-Africanism. Mm-hmm. First Pan-African conference was held here in the 1890s, mm. you know? And, uh, and remember Elijah Muhammad was up in Detroit, came down to Chicago. And, and I mean, it's, you know, our history, you know, our, our, our speculative history when you see, because when I start talking, when I start thinking about Octavia Butler, since we freestyle in it, you know, I think about Octavia Butler. I think about these outside people with these different ideas, like Octavia Butler and Sun Ra, and their ideas were considered fringe, you know. And and I got thrown in them into the middle of all that. You know, I had model rockets when I was a kid. It, it, you know, there were those of us who were looking forward to stars, even then, you know, because 
if Afrofuturism is anything, it's it's the uh, it's the it's the rad it's, it's black radical imagination right. amplified amplified to the point that it infringes itself into reality. Right. Right. That's well, applied for futurists, right? Well, yeah. Well, that's why I was bringing up, you know, my travels now to West Africa, and I'm sure you're familiar with the Dogon. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, and, yeah. And, and their whole concepts around Twin Star and how they look at the cosmos, so forth and so on. I'm seeing a lot of that now show up in yeah. when I'm in Burkina Faso, uh, Mali. You can see uh, this influence you know, of the Dokans. And I'm saying, well, well, let me, so well, let me interesting. Give, let me, let me give you a little, a little tidbit on that Do- Dogon piece. The research for the Dogon, uh, for, uh, Marcel Griot, the money for that, the, 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 the money for that trip that he did where he, where he went, uh, from, from, uh, from West Africa to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, uh, uh Djibouti and went through, through the Dogon country. Was financed partially by this boxer, uh, this this black boxer, uh, Pat, Panama Brown, and um, and uh, the the dancer singer. What's her name? Uh, oh, what is it? Help me, guys! My my my. Who is my, this my now? Who is this uh, now? Who, who who is this? Uh, the singer, Paris in in Paris. Uh, oh, Josephine Baker. Josephine, yeah, Josephine Baker. Panama Brown was a. Uh, what was a dancer in Josephine Baker's troupe. And he did a boxing match to raise the money for Marcel Griot to take the scientific expedition. Interesting. And when they came back, Josephine Baker and Panama Brown hosted the opening of the exhibition. Hmm. You know, and that's what started him on that. That's what started him on that trip because Josephine Baker and Panama Brown and, you know, entertainer athletes recognized the importance of the research that they were doing and they helped make it possible, you know, and I, and I have to let people know that because it's like, you know, we ain't doing nothing new. We, we're just doing, we're doing, what we're doing now is what people want to consider fringe. You know, I have to jump in here. I have to jump in here and plant a seed. Right. So on yesterday, I um, spent a good amount of time with um, my former chair, from the computer science department at the University of San Francisco when I was embedded in that department, right? And we were talking about how Wikipedia is a powerful corpus of of information, even though it's Web 1.0. Can you hold your point one second? Floyd, are you able to mute your phone when you're not talking? There's a lot of background noise. If you okay, okay, thank you. Great, thank you. And so we were discussing how every community, every institution, every country, right, every entity really should have its own Wikipedia, but on this next round of like not just information but intelligence, right? Like Brother Floyd, you've dropped at least a hundred seeds, <laughs> like, like at least a hundred seeds. And if we don't like really archive these kind of seeds from these kind of conversations and not just in dead data, but in intelligence, right? So 10 years from now, five years from now, a young person or any curious, curious person can put in the query Afrofuturism, Right. And just be given a whole taxonomy, like, like, you know, a summary of this conversation, Sun Ra. I mean, like, you know, like, take the wisdom, summarize it or not, but make it accessible, right? Because if this just gets, like, recorded, and that's, that's a great thing for now, but we can make it live, right? We can make it queryable. We can make it, like, part of, like, an intelligence network. Totally agree. And you're bringing up such a beautiful point. Uh, So, uh, Brother Floyd, uh, I'm not sure if we actually met. I I don't know if you came to Los Angeles uh, back. We hosted something at 
USC some years ago. I'm not sure if you were here. I don't recall meeting you personally, but I've known about you since that event. We hosted the Global Cinema and Music Symposium. We had done a, a version of this at Salvador Bahia, Brazil. Uh, uh, hello? Yeah. Yeah. You know Did what, you come to that, that event at, at USC that we hosted? That, another... was a, that, was, that was in a huge auditorium? Yes. Yes, I did come to that. Okay. I kind of briefly remember meeting you. And then from then on, it was always Floyd. I heard your name everywhere. And, of course, dealing with uh, 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 Sade, Turnip Seed. Uh, that's, uh, you know, kind of really connected us because I know she was talking to you all the time. Mm-hmm. So, listen, we're going we're gonna to be uh, kind of wrapping here, but I would love to talk to you again and we further this dialogue. I'm working with some uh, filmmakers in Burkina Faso. That's there. They've already done the first documentary on uh, Thomas Sakara, the the assassinated president of uh, Burkina Faso. And Sankara, that's my boy. Yeah, Sankara. And they're doing a part two doc on that. They screened the first one in New York at the. Uh, my hands festival in New York. Um, so they're looking to do some other things and I want to bring them here to Los Angeles. I, I want it from a streaming channel, blackness. TV, B L A C K N U S S. TV. Okay. Uh, we definitely will talk about that because so we'll talk about this offline. Cause there's I'm some good filmmakers right now. Yeah. There's some great filmmakers and they're now, you know, that they've had the trial, the trial has culminated and, um, you know, they found everybody guilty. And of course, uh, the former president is now in exile in Cote d'Ivoire, I believe. Uh, and sabotage and, yeah. and continuing to sabotage things. Well, back there. <laughs> it's a lot going on right now on the, on the continent and how we're connecting that through the culture of music and film is so, uh, interesting to me. So I'm just so happy that you could take a little time to have a conversation. And now that we've connected, we're going to continue this connection. Okay, yeah. So I'm sorry we got, you know, talk about, I mean, if, if we're going to talk about culture, we have to talk about it in a holistic way, right? And, you know, and we have to talk about the things we miss, the things we do, the things we've missed. I mean, we, we, we've had a lot of victories. I mean, Woman King, to me, Woman King was a major victory in spite of the system she had to work in. Well, that's interesting nope. you bring that up, uh, Woman King, because uh, most people that I've run into when I bring up that film, uh, they have no context whatsoever historically about what that is. You see what I'm yeah, saying? Well, yeah, well, 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 see, that's the issue. Uh, we don't have any, a lot of us, the majority of us don't have any concept of African history, right? And so we don't, we don't know how to look at it. It's, it's like people were trying to, bad, I mean, like, one, you've got this Eidos, this, this like Eidos movement. That's totally grows out of Trumpism, right? Oh, it's just sort of yeah, anti African. Yeah, ADOS. Uh, yeah, that's... Afri- African descendants of <laughs> yeah, slaves. Yeah, African yeah. descendants of slaves. I would never know slave. I don't know about, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't cop to that. I, we illegal, I'm with We you were 100%. illegal captives. We were illegal captives and we were rebellious. No Every decade we've been here, there has been a rebellion. Absolutely. Every decade since we landed, right? We have Absolutely. never accepted this. We have never been, sub- we have never been submissive, but we have sabotaged. We have rebelled. Maroonish. We have, <laughs> you know what I mean? From, yeah. from the womb, of like, like Queen Mother Moore said, we've, we struggle from the womb to the tomb till this thing is over with. That's right. Absolutely. And, and the thing that takes it, it took us 500 years to get into this position, and we ain't going to get out of it in 150. Exactly. Right. That's the point. You know? And, you know, talking to uh, people on the continent in Benin, current day Benin, and talking about uh, the woman king, you know, that's a very uh, profound. We're getting a lot of noise, Floyd. I don't know if that's your phone. Uh, hold on, hold on. Okay. Uh, yeah, talking to people on uh, in the country of Benin, uh, it's really interesting to hear their perspective of that particular film. So, uh, about the woman king. Yeah. But anyway, uh, Floyd... Uh, you know, again, thank you, man. Uh, I think what we'll do is set another opportunity to invite you back uh, and uh, 
Definitely. Why don't Kentucky we do this live? Why don't we do this live over Blackness.tv? I have a live channel. Okay. So we could do so we could do this live, man. I mean, really, this is the kind of stuff I want to do. I hear you, man. I mean, this is uh, just getting started here, and I was sharing with uh, my co-host Afiki that this is part of a channel. Uh, you know, that's called the Film Verdict, which is a critical, uh, 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 you know, film critics channel, uh, web, web platform that deals with global cinema. And within that framework, um, you know, the, the African, the continent of Africa and, and its diaspora is part of that, a uh, part of that platform. So we were really excited to launch this, uh, new podcast called Noir 360. So anyway, man, yeah, let's do it. Let's talk about it. Let's make it happen. Okay, I'm sorry I wasn't in a, in a quieter place I thought I was going to be, but, you know, during the day, stuff gets messed up. <laughs> you know, I thought I was going to be in my office all day, but I had to leave. Well, you know. So look, so, so look I'll be in touch with, with both of y'all, man. Because, okay, you know, man. Cool. Uh, cool look baby. forward okay. to it. Look right. forward okay. to it. Thank right. you so much. Uh, okay. Wait, before you go, before you go, let people know how they can get in touch with if you have some kind of public social or something you sure, want. Sure, they can find me on Twitter at, at Floyd Webb, at Floyd Webb, on Instagram at Floyd Webb. Uh, you can get me on Facebook, just Floyd Webb in Chicago. It, I think it's like Floyd.Webb.Chicago. But if you look up Floyd Webb, I come up right away. All I right. got a bald head and big glasses, so you'll... <laughs> Can't miss you. <laughs> look, look, look at, look at, look at like Poindexter. Looking like, look, look, look like a, a big head, big, big head Dr. Yakum with glasses. Right. And, uh, so, uh, yeah. And, uh, and then floydweb.com. And you can go to blackness.tv either online or if you've got Roku, you can, you can, you can, uh, you can download our channel. And we're three ninety nine a month, and we're a streaming channel. Uh, we're, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm doing uh, original work. Oh, uh, we just started a, 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 a Japanese film about the occupation, about the half black, the, the uh, mixed race occupation children of the American occupation of Japan, uh, based on a film that was made in nineteen fifty nine. So we started shooting that February third, awesome. and, uh, and and I'm also working on a documentary about Yasuke. The, uh, the African warrior who goes to, to Japan and becomes a samurai. But he wasn't trained to be a samurai. He was not a slave. He was not trained to be a samurai. He was made a samurai because he was already better than both samurais when he got there. You know, wow. You see, people, don't, people don't understand the warrior culture in Africa. Great story. Because, because, they, because they basically, wipe, you know, in terms of literature, they wiped it out. In, in, in the English and the French language, you have to go to the Arabic. You know, you have to go to the Arabic. You have to go to uh, you, you have to go to uh, oral court, uh, oral uh, tra- tra- traditions, and even in the and in the Dutch uh, Dutch li- libraries, you'll find this information about African warrior culture. You know, African warrior culture was as bad as any warrior culture in the world. Mm. You know, the, the only difference, like Malcolm said, the only difference between them and us is when they mastered the cannon. They had that technology advantage over us, and they used it. And when Nzinga tried to get a factory to make guns and to make cannons, they took her out of Africa. Wow. Vanished to the fortune. Wow. You know, so, yeah. So, anyway. That's why we got to talk again, to talk about. Yes. Okay. All I'd right. love to. Okay. Listen, okay. have a wonderful day. Uh, thanks, okay. Floyd. And we'll talk to okay. you soon. Okay. Be well, right, man. Then. Good hearing okay. from you. Oh, okay. Talk to you soon. All right. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Bye. The Film Verdict gives you Noir 360, hosted by Rashid Bahati, a global podcast that explores the impact and influence of black cinema around the world.